Hi, welcome to the Shift with Intention podcast. I'm Jamie Zagrafis, your host, and I just wanted to welcome you on today and let you know that we are going to be talking about, well, first, you know, let me tell you guys, when I first started the podcast, I was having people come on and talk about their story and how they shifted, and I love all that. And then I... I've learned a little bit and I thought it would be a good idea for my audience to get to know me and some of the tidbits of knowledge that I have that I want to share and different shifts that I've made that, you know, the more I think about it, I've made so, so many. And so I feel really called to share those with you guys. And so everything can shift at any time. And so that's what we're doing on our Shift with Intention podcast. And we will have guests and it will just be not, it just won't be every week. And so, um, so I just decided that I wanted to do it that way until I shift again and do it a different way. So that's what we're doing today. We are going to talk about teaching people how to treat you. And this is really, really close to my heart. And I've heard the phrase as I'm sure many of you have, you know, many times you teach people how to treat you. And it wasn't until I fully experienced this and changed, you know, different behaviors I did that I learned what this really meant. And so we teach people how to treat us in all circumstances, children, our relationships, our work, um, our friendships, uh, acquaintances, colleagues, clients, uh, anything. And we do that by accepting what they do or don't do. And so let's use our kids when they're little, you know, you teach your kids how to treat you. And if they throw a temper tantrum and if you're okay with that and give them a piece of candy after the temper tantrum, then, you know, you're reinforcing, Hey, let's keep doing a temper tantrum. If you, you know, don't discipline them after, you know, a certain thing, then they've learned that they can get away with that. Human beings will get away with whatever they can. It's not a manipulative, you know, generally a manipulative thing. It's just human beings will do what they can do. And if that doesn't work, they'll do something else. I mean, it's just human nature. So kids as, you know, when they're little, you know, they'll, you know, steal a toy from, you know, their brother or sister and play with it. If they get away with it, they'll keep doing it. If they don't, they won't. And, you know, as, you know, kids get older, if they lie about something and they get away with it, they're going to keep doing it. So kids will do whatever age that is, whatever they can and whatever you'll take. And if they yell at you, if they treat you a certain way, whatever, if they don't do their chores, they don't listen to you, they talk back to you, whatever it is that they do. If you accept it as okay, meaning you don't create a boundary around that, you don't discipline them, you don't behave a different way so their behavior changes, which I'll touch on in a minute, you're teaching them how to treat you by what you accept. So it's unspoken. So like in a relationship, if somebody, you know, let's just say you're dating and it's a new relationship and somebody doesn't text you back and you keep texting them, and you're initiating all the conversations, and they never have to, then they are learning how to treat you. If you're the person that, you know, texts once and waits for a response, and, you know, you're pretty healthy in that space, then they understand that they need to text you back. If you ask some, you know, you ask somebody out, excuse me, they say yes, and you go on this beautiful date, but they don't give any energy, you know, after that, and you accept that behavior, you're teaching them how to treat you. You're teaching them that that's okay. Is that okay? Is that going to be okay later? Don't be something early in the relationship that you don't want to be later. So, you know, don't show up, you know, so many people in the beginning of a relationship show up in this la 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 way, you know, trying to hold back any, any, non-amazing part of themselves. Not that we're rolling out all our dirt (laughs) in the first couple of dates, but, you know, be who you are. So, and allow people to treat you how they treat people and then see if that's acceptable to you. So I think it's just invaluable. People are who they are. You can't change them. What you can do is you can change your behavior with them. So let's say something doesn't work in a relationship for you. And, you know, 
it may take a minute for that to transpire. It doesn't happen on like the first time, oh, they said this, and I don't really like that. They talked down to me. You can have that conversation and say, you know, I don't appreciate the way you talked to me about that. And I felt, you know, however you felt, and then I have that conversation. If they keep doing it, then you need to change your behavior so they change their behavior. And if they don't, then it's not your person. And that happens. I think my mentor told me before he passed, it was one of the wisest things he said, and I didn't love it at the time. And he said, Jamie, the person with the bigger awareness has to jump the fence. And that doesn't mean that person's better than the other. And he always, you know, would, you know, reiterate that. It just means that that person is the one that has to make the change if there's something going on. So if one person has done more personal development or has more awareness about a situation and age doesn't matter, it can be the kid is more intuitive than the parent. And so the kid has to shift something for something to change. Age is not a factor in this. I mean, maybe as toddlers and parents, you know, sometimes they're smarter than us. But if you don't change your behavior on something that doesn't work for you and create a boundary around that, they're going to keep doing it. And then you're going to be resentful and you're going to, you know, if something's not going to work. At some point, it's not going to work. Because if you don't like the way that you're being treated and you accept it, you're teaching them how to treat you. And so at work, if, you know, you have a colleague, I mean, I'm sure this happens all the time. You have, you know, some bad energy in the workplace. We've had it, you know, at our center and I've, I've had to do a lot of work to get, you know, move that around and get the right people in the right seats. If those people don't treat you well or respect you or honor you and all of those things, you have to say something and stand up and advocate for yourself. And if you do that and it still doesn't change, then change your behavior around that. And that may mean setting a boundary of, you know, I'm going to only say this. My therapist told me one time, a lot of times it's good to mirror what someone's saying. If someone says, hey, do you think I should go to the store and go buy this, you know, expensive purse? A lot of times she would say, why don't you say something like, well, do you want that expensive purse? Because, you know, they'll, they could come back and be like, well, you told me I should buy it, you know, and just, just weird things. I think that teaching someone how to treat you is so valuable. I have a friend going through a uh, crazy scenario with a guy that, you know, she really likes, he really likes her and the amount of quality attention he gives her is minuscule. And he says all the right things and does all the right things in that minuscule piece of time. And then he doesn't. And the pattern repeats itself. And so when he gives her that little bit, she holds on to that for whatever that period of time is, let's call it five days. And then, and then she's not okay with it. And then they have a lot of conversations around that and then nothing changes, but her behavior hasn't always changed to follow up with that. And if you don't like the way someone treats you, why are you spending time with them? Why are you trying to have a conversation over and over and over to get them to treat you different? I remember when I was married and I f- truly felt like my husband didn't love me. And I'm sure a lot of that was on me that I had to work through. And this was 2000, like early 2015. And I would just drive around in my car and I was like, I wonder if I... I wonder if my husband would love me more if, and the thought that came to my head over and over was if I got in a car accident or if I got sick and all of those happened. And it's like I manifested that to happen to see if he would love me more. Now he loved me, but whatever was going through me and my journey and my healing, I, I didn't feel loved. But I wouldn't change my behavior around it. I would still do the same thing and I would overgive to him and try to fix scenarios for him so he would feel better and thought that that was enough for us to work. And then I get sick. And then the game changes because now I have to take care of me. And my adversity was such a gift. My adversity was such a gift because it allowed me to truly 
dig into everything, all the decisions I make, all of them. Why would I stay with somebody that I truly don't think loves me, that I pour into all the time, that he was going through his journey, that he had to, you know, heal stuff with him. And while I didn't know that, I do now. And, and so, but I taught him that he didn't need to treat me well. He didn't need to financially support us because I would do that. He didn't need to, I mean, I can't remember, pay this, that, or the other because I would, he knew I would do it anyway. And I taught him to treat me like that. And I'm the only one that can take responsibility for choosing that. And so after, you know, and then I got super resentful and then I got sick. I'm like, I'm not doing this anymore. Nothing is worth my health and I need to do it different. So I started doing it different. And that then changed his behavior because he's like, hold on, I'm not going to lose this because, you know, now I'm changing my behavior. So then it woke him up, I guess, let's say. And while, while it still didn't work out, you know, we did try different ways, you know, even after we got divorced for six months, which is comical, but, you know, we wanted it to work so bad. So it was just a good example of, I taught him how to treat me. So, um, Guys, pay attention to that with people that you're not very happy with how they treat you. What are you accepting that you're not changing your behavior on? Or what are you accepting that you're not speaking on? And I think behavior changing action is bigger than the other. In a divorce case, you know, I mean, I've been divorced and I've had to deal with my ex-husband on paying different bills and whatever. (laughs) And I'm still learning how to change my behavior on that. But if you know, talking to your ex is, if it's not a amicable divorce is, you know, like the worst thing ever. But if you're talking to them the same way and you know, it already doesn't work because it didn't work or you'd still be married, try a different behavior on how to talk to them, a different approach. And sometimes that changes them to be like, oh, okay. It's amazing. And it's not manipulative. It's just being a little bit wiser on, I think I have a little bit more self-awareness than this person. So if I change my behavior, maybe it'll change the way they respond to me. It's brilliant. It is seriously one of the biggest shifts in my life that I, I, I've i done. It's intentional. So you get to shift with intention. It is so intentional and it works. So that's the first thing I wanted to talk about. Uh, Second thing I wanted to talk about is solutions to problems that we have had in our life and how to find those. And I I can't remember. I know I learned it at Joe Dispenza, but I don't know if it's his quote. But anyway, we'll just say I learned it at Joe Dispenza retreat. You cannot solve a problem in your life in the same consciousness that created the problem. What that means is the 3D world, the world we all walk around in. If a problem was created in that space, which is where our problems are created, you cannot solve that problem with the same thinking and consciousness that created the problem. That means that you have to, you're going to keep running a spiral that doesn't really solve the problem unless you get to a deeper level of consciousness, such as a meditation or something that you can solve the problem on a deeper level that wasn't in the same consciousness that created the problem. Joe Dispenza has this fabulous meditation called changing boxes is my favorite one. And changing boxes is kind of surrendering. Well, it's not kind of, it is, it's surrendering your problem like up to the universe to have someone else kind of solve it for you. And you're surrendering to the fact that I've tried so many things and I don't know. So I need to change boxes. And it's such a visual thing in the meditation. And then in the coming days or weeks, different synchronicities will happen happen in your life that actually create a solution to the problem. And I've done that a couple of times on things. It's my favorite meditation. I do that on things that I'm like, I don't know what I'm doing in this or what would you advise or just surrender to a higher, a higher calling of yourself even because you have it all inside you, but sometimes in the level of consciousness that we're in, we just can't see it. You know, I've, I've had many answers show up in a meditation on how to deal with something that they don't show up in that meditation, but they'll show up in the coming days and weeks. And I'm like, huh, there we go. 
it's been a game changer meditation. And I'm a ex, uh, extrovert and I'm more introverted than I used to be, but I am social. I love it. I'm, I talk a lot and being quiet is so good for you. And I learned that, I don't know, four years ago and it, it's where all your answers happen. And that's been amazing for me. And then the last thing I want to talk about is signs from the universe. And first of all, I want to tell you all that I was raised Catholic and I believe in God and I, you know, went to Catholic school, all the sacraments, got married in the Catholic church. My struggle point for me was when my kid's dad and I got divorced and they were four and nine. So they both went, you know, we were in Catholic school, kindergarten and like fourth grade or something. And we were the, like the first people to get divorced, I <laughs> swear to God. And we, everybody talked about it. And I felt like such an outsider in this very, very small, intimate church. And there's like 25 kids in their class. And it was, we were the only divorced ones and it was super hard and the judgment and, you know, just, you know, people pick sides all the time and I was not into playing that game. So I just kind of went my own way and it's when I was like, I don't want to go to church. And so I stopped going to the Catholic church, but I've always had a really, really strong faith. And I've always felt like I was just a little bit different. And so I don't remember exactly when, but a couple of years later, you know, I started I'm trying to think when that was, it couldn't have been right before, I guess it was, maybe it was five, six years later after I got sick and I started doing work on myself and the whole spiritual piece that is so big in my world came up. And, you know, when I learned, learned the value of intention and that you can ask for things and things show up and signs from the universe and which it's all the same thing, it's all a higher power, but I couldn't call it, you know, Jesus, God going to church because it created a disconnection for me because of what had happened in my journey. So my mom even called me one day and she's like, Jamie, why do you call it universe? And I was like, mom, why don't you just be happy that I'm still calling it something? And it's, I have such a strong faith and it's so, so important and ingrained in me. And I don't know what I've had that if I wasn't raised like that. I imagine so. My sister's very spiritual herself and she doesn't attend the Catholic church. Anyway, what I'm getting to is However you hear this, it's all the same thing. I do believe in the laws of the universe and the law of attraction and energy and all of that. I also believe that someone is always taking care of us and there are signs in your life and people, places, and things that show up along the way that help you. And if you ask for a sign, you can get a sign. Sometimes signs come when we don't even ask especially if you haven't really stepped into a full spirituality. For example, 2009, I, my divorce is almost over. The gentleman I'm dating, we had been dating for six months and he is moving in to my house. we later got married, but nothing, I would never do that again. But anyway, he was moving in and it was June of 09 and I'm driving home from Sydney's uh, softball game on a winding road in Wildwood and driving, driving, and a car veers into my lane. I, there's no shoulder. I, you know, swerve to avoid this car. And then I overcorrect and then go this way. And we go tumbling down the ravine and the girls didn't have a scratch. I, uh, messed up my front four teeth and broke uh, my wrist. I have a screw, uh, I'm going to plate and seven screws in my wrist and I broke my foot. And I turn around to the girls after the car stops and we hit a tree or whatnot. And I said, are you guys okay? And they're like, oh my God, mom, your face. And we all looked outside. And this is like nine o'clock at night. And this gives me the chills. We all looked outside a uh, passenger window and there's a gentleman standing there in like sheep's clothing. And I said, I need my phone. And he said, help's on the way. And we're all like, what? And he said, help is on the way. And then I reached down to find my phone and then we look up and he's gone. And there was an ambulance there in probably four or five minutes. And we all remember that story to this day. It's actually, that's what I wrote about in my shift with intention chapter um, of the book. And car accidents are the universe's way of telling you you're going the wrong direction. I had no idea. And if I would have listened to that, I likely would have not had him move in and get married 
And then I went through cancer. Not that that's his fault or anything, just the trajectory of what happened. But, and I'm grateful that the choices that I made, so don't, you know, think that, that I wish I did them different. But I didn't know that car accidents were the universe's way of telling you you're going the wrong direction with something in your life. So if that wasn't enough, the car gets totaled. It's like a 2007 Suburban. So it's a two-year-old huge Suburban gets totaled. And then I'm in a (laughs) rent a car and I get hit. I get in a car accident with the rent a car. And then I don't remember what other car, but these, I had three car accidents in like three months. It was like June, August, September, something insane. And I'm like, you've got to be kidding me. And I still didn't know then that car accidents were the universe's way of telling you you're going the wrong direction. I haven't been in a car accident since. I haven't gotten a ticket. I, I mean, nothing. And it's like, I have a guardian angel, a guardian angel over me when I'm driving because I, nothing happens. And I had no idea. And so I just kept going on the path. And my niece was in um, a car accident, pretty significant car accident this summer. And her mom, you know, my sister was like, hey, that means you're going the wrong direction. And now no 18-year-old girl wants to look at that, but she did. And she made some changes and she's on this beautiful path. And it's just, you guys, these signs are, you know, they get louder and louder and louder. If you don't hear them, they're going to get louder. I remember when I was in the personal development sector in the very, very beginning, and I was like, gosh, do I believe all this? And uh, I was climbing the Crave Course steps, and it's the fall, and there's deer everywhere. And at the top of the Crave Course steps, there, if anybody knows what those are, there's 222 steps. And at the very top, there's like an open field and a playground on one side, open field on the other. And there's like six deer just hanging out. So I'm like, oh, that's cute. I love nature, you know? And so then I go back down the steps and then I go back up the steps, 222. So call it, I don't know, five, six minutes later. And during my climb down and my climb back up, I said out loud, and this was when I was still figuring out, is it universe? God, how do I, how do I say this? And I was like, God, I need to know that you're here. I need to know you're here to help me. I need to know you're here to protect me. I need to know, can you please show me while I'm here at Creve Core Steps? So I kid you not, this is one of my favorite signs. I get to the top of the steps and there's the six deer. And then there's a tree, a big tree, like straight ahead after the creep horse steps. I don't know. I don't know yards very well, we'll call it a hundred yards and a big like oak tree. And then a deer goes boop and shows his little head. So this is deer seven, which is super spiritual number. And I'm like, no way. And then pokes his head back behind the tree. I'm like, you, you cannot make this up. So then I go back down the stairs and I'm like, all right, I need to see this again <laughs> because I'm not saying I don't believe you, but I need to see it again. I need some confirmation. And that's okay to say that when you're learning how to believe and you're learning your faith, it's okay to be totally like, Hey, I'm not sure I understand this. And I think that's fair. That's totally honest. So I was like, I need some confirmation, please. So I get back, go back up the stairs and the same thing happens. And I'm like, all right, show me you're here. And this, I'm assuming same deer goes boop, like a little deer smile. (laughs) I don't even know. And I'm like, oh my God. And I felt so guided and taken care of. And I have felt most of my life, but I was like, oh my gosh, oh my gosh. And it just, it, it was so neat to me. And there's no coincidences in that. There can't be. So anyway, I've had so many fun signs. I've had eagles swoop down in front of me when I'm driving. Um, and then they'll just stop on the side of the road right when I'm by my farm. Cause I know that's where I'm supposed to be. Um, I asked for a sign in a relationship I was in and I, a couple years ago, and I was like, is this really a good place for me? And I knew it probably wasn't, but I was like, Hey, is this a good place for me? And within 30 seconds, a rock hits my windshield and the windshield cracks all across. So if you Google that, your windshield cracking straight across, like in your eye line, is that you're not seeing things very clearly. I was like, well, that doesn't get louder. And it's it's amazing, you guys. You but it's the awareness of paying attention to the signs. The last couple, I don't know, probably four or five days, I've really felt a shift is going on in my life and that it's coming and that there's a lot of energy with it. And so I've been a little bit quiet and I'm spending a lot of time with myself. So I'm at the rehab house that I'm doing 
and my sister's coming over to help me with some kitchen stuff. And so I left the front door open, maybe 15 minutes, which I leave the front door open all the time to get the air flowing with all the stuff that I'm doing in there. And a cardinal flies in and is just hanging out on the old dishwasher that's pulled out in the kitchen. And my sister comes in and I show her a few things and I didn't even see the cardinal yet. And then I'm like, oh my gosh, do you see that? That's a huge sign. And I just kind of put out to the universe, I don't know, a day or two or three ago. And I said, I need to know where you want me and where I'm supposed to be. And I have felt called to my farm so much. And I don't, you know, my life's taken a couple of detours. So it's not like I get to be there very much right now. And it's in the finishing stages, like phase one. And I know what I'm creating there and I know it's going to be so neat. And so I pulled up what this cardinal means. And basically it means you're protected and safe and loved and cared for, and that any new business venture, when cardinals fly through your front door, very specifically, it said that any business venture will be extremely successful. And then we opened the slider and within 38 seconds, little cardinal flew out the slider. And I'm like, wow. And people, places, and things will show up all the time. We just have to pay attention. And so pay attention to the people, places, and things. Pay attention to how you let people treat you because you're teaching them how to treat you. And then when you can't solve the problem, you guys, get to a different level of consciousness and hand it over to a higher power of yourself or surrender to the powers of the universe to give you the answer. That's, you know, we're all here to help each other. And I hope that some of my little wisdom pieces are helping you guys. Um, I would love to know if they are. Shoot me a note. I'd love a review on the podcast. I'd love if anybody knows anybody that I could be on their podcast if they, um, if you think it would be a good fit. And this is one of my favorite things. I mean, I sit on here and I talk to a computer screen, but I feel like it's so intuitive and authentic to me and the things that I've learned, that if I can help anybody learn the things I've learned, how fun is that? One of my favorite things is when I've taught somebody, you know, about abundance. It's one of my favorite things because I used to not be that. And then they'll call, they're like, Jamie, I'm not kidding. I just got a check in the mail that I didn't even know was coming. I'm like, abundance delivered. So anyway, thank you for listening to the Shift with Intention podcast. Please drop uh, a review, uh, share it with your friends and uh, anybody that you think could benefit from anything I've said today. And we'll talk to you guys soon. Thanks. Thanks.